Hi! In this video I want to explain to you why I think you should read this book if you are a creative person. And especially if you're a creator on YouTube. So it's not about whether or not you should, it's why I believe it's worth the time and the money. And if you don't have a lot of time, well, I will mention my four reasons right now in the beginning and feel free to then stop the video and move on. But I will then afterwards go into detail because I think there are a lot more things to uncover and talk about than the four reasons. I believe that every creative person will be able to ship more and especially more creative work by the help of this book. Why is that? Number one. I think this is more than a book. It doesn't feel like reading a book to me. I've had this now since more than a week. And every time I open the book, it feels like I'm entering a space. It's a creative production space. So this book has managed, and I'm getting goosebumps now saying that because it's the absolute truth. This book has managed to get me into a specific state of mind each and every time that I've opened it and I have been able to think about the things that I want to create in a completely different, more open and more self-aware way. And hardly any book ever managed to do that for me. So that's reason number one. Reason number two. I think this book couldn't be summarized. Now why is this a reason <laughs> to actually buy this book or to think about buying this book. There have been a couple of books in the last years that could easily be summarized because they're basically about one or three basic ideas and the rest of the book is just stories about this main idea and trying to convince you that it's actually true. This book, however, feels like you're entering a room with an infinite amount of doors. And those doors, they basically represent threads that you can pull on in your own mind. This might sound a little weird for you now, but it's not a basic thought and then stories. No, it's, I would say it's meditations and observations and mantras. So Rick Rubin, even though he could, is not doing any name dropping in here. I will talk a little bit about who Rick Rubin actually is in a bit. Um, so he could drop uh, a tremendous amount of names from the music industry here, but he doesn't. What he does, however, is he views the creative act as this way of being. And with his mantras and observations, as I would like to call them, he helps you to get into a similar state of mind and think about your creative work in a similar way. So there isn't a way how you could summarize this large room, this large space of opportunities in any other way. Now, one thing that I'm really struggling with as a creator, and you might too, I'm a creator and I do want to create work that I love and that I feel proud of. And where I have the feeling that I can move other people. Now, it seems to me that there are two different ways to think about that. So, and it's like a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, there's the creative end. So here I can think about what's the most creative thing I can create and ship. And then there's the other end, which you might be confronted on a uh, YouTube a lot, which is the commercial side, especially because in the last months, I feel that the amount of content that has been created to convince you how to structure your channel, how to grow subscribers, how to grow everything has increased tremendously. And from my point of view, this book at least helps me to focus more on the creative side, to think about what is the stuff that I want to create, what I'm capable of and where I feel I'm getting in resonance with the most. So ever since I've owned the book, whenever I've opened it and whenever I started pulling on a thread and there were voices in my head before that were trying to convince me of the commercial side of things, 
I now feel a lot more calm because I feel like I can actually follow this path of creativity. And this is what the book has done for me already, even though I've only had it for a bit more than a week. And the last reason why I think you should buy this book, really, um, number four, it's already a little personal because for me, Rick Rubin is a very special character. So I have consumed a lot of his interviews, a lot of his talks, his podcast um, in the previous years. So I know what his voice sounds like. And I know what the energy is that his presence kind of transports. For me, that's very calm and productive and creative. Those would be the attributes that I would kind of label his presence with and his energy. And reading this book made me feel like he's actually in the room with me because it's a bit like, I don't know if you know Seth Godin, for example. Seth Godin, for me, is one of the other people that managed to do that by the things that they write and the stuff that he talks about. It's the same thing. I always have the feeling that I'm listening to him, even though I'm just reading um, text on a paper. And I got exactly the same experience with Rick's book, which I find very valuable because this is the kind of atmosphere I need in order to do my most creative work. So that's it, right? We could end this video right now. If you only want to know my four reasons, that's it. Go buy the book. Oh. So you're still here. Um, that's cool. So now we can dig a little deeper, if you wish. Because should you actually listen to my advice? Well, that depends on what it is that you want. If you want to be a super successful YouTuber, have millions of subscribers, maybe you shouldn't. Because I'm a, I'm a nobody from Germany with a YouTube account with 400 subscribers. So that's not a role model <laughs> for maybe what you want to do, is it? But if you want to ship the most creative work that you'll ever be able to ship and produce, maybe you should stick around a little longer. Because I really think that what's in this book and the things that I want to talk about now might help you to do that. One of the most important things that this book does, it does right in the beginning. Because right in the beginning, Rick Rubin kind of sets the stage for what's about to happen. And in a few words, he explains that what's about to follow is not the truth. It's not the one truth that we agree on, because there isn't this truth. It doesn't exist. But he already underlines that all he's about to offer is a perspective. And I think if you want to do anything that's remotely creative, this is a very helpful way to view the world. Everything that happens around us, the way we see it, is based on culturally adopted norms. And there isn't this reality that we can all agree on. And so I think this book does something which is very calming because it opens the space for more creative ideas. So if, a, if I want to view something from a different perspective, I can, because the way that we are viewing it today might just be the cultural norm. It's not the truth. Now, who is Rick Rubin, actually? Because up till now, I haven't <laughs> spent a single moment about introducing him to you. If you know him, that's fine. If you don't, let me please introduce him to you. But I want to do that in a slightly different way. Um, and the way I kind of got to know him. The name was always in the back of my head. I knew that there was this guy called Rick Rubin, but I didn't know what he was doing. There's another guy, Zane Lowe. Zane Lowe has been one of my role models for the last decade or so, a bit more. Why? Saint Lowe used to be um, a radio DJ for BBC. And 
What I really admired about Zane Lowe, always and still do, is the way he's able to have a conversation, a deep conversation with the people he's talking to. And if you're interested in really good conversations, please go check out what he does. He's now working for Apple Beats, so Beats One, which is like Apple's radio station. He's not working for BBC anymore. And a few years back, I found this conversation with that gray haired gray bearded guy, Rick Rubin. Um, I'll link that somewhere here. And all of a sudden I thought, wow, this kind of conversation is the conversation I want to listen to and I want to create myself. And so I dug deeper into who Rick Rubin was. And Rick Rubin is one of the most popular music producers of almost all time, I would say. So he's produced music together with the Beastie Boys, with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, with Johnny Cash, with Adele, with Eminem, with... You could continue this list with almost any musician you know, and most of them will most probably have worked with Rick Rubin at some point in their career. And that, of course, was very appealing to me because I thought, okay, why do all these people work with a guy like Rick Rubin? And especially, what is it that a music producer does? And in one of the conversations I recently listened to, he was in Rich Roll's podcast. I'm also going to link that here. And Rich asked him the question, so what is it that you actually do as a music producer? And that's where I thought, okay, it makes sense to listen to this guy. <laughs> Because he explains that all he does is that he tries to find the essence of what's trying to be created. So there's this creative person, a musician, who's trying to make something to help others experience the same thing that they've gone through, for example. So someone who's just gone through a very tragic breakup wants to bake this into a piece of music. And Rick, in his role of a producer, will then try and help this person to bake this into a record. And he said something that I found very interesting because his job isn't to like add more stuff here and there. His job is really to take everything away so the essence remains. So in the end, what he produces and what he helps them to create is something that's very pure and is just about this very essential feeling, a very essential emotion. And that's when I thought, Wow, okay, that's really interesting. And then he appeared in another podcast, another show that I really love, in the Huberman Lab podcast, which I also recommend to you, and I've also linked it up here, um, and then introduced this book. So I wasn't aware about this book until he appeared in the Huberman Lab podcast. And so I thought, I need to check it out. For me, Creating anything is a lot about the energy. Energy in the room, energy between people, relationship between people. And that's why I think what Rick Rubin does is so important and on the other end, so interesting. Because the energy that he kind of transports as a person is really appealing to me. I'd really love to work with him at some point, but like I said, I'm this German nobody with a very small YouTube channel. And by reading this book, I feel like I'm already kind of working with him. Because I don't know what it's like for you. If you are a creative person of any kind, it doesn't matter what kind of craft you're in. If you're a musician, if you're a videographer, if you're a speaker, if your creative work has to do with you being a businessman and trying to negotiate in the most creative way possible, it doesn't matter. For me, there's always this large gap, like I explained before, between the creative side of things and 
the commercial side of things. And in our day to day, I feel like we're always more leaning and shifting towards the commercial side of things. Because of course, in the end, bills need to get paid. We need to make a living from the things that we ship and the things that we produce. But everything around this book, Rick Rubin and the people he's worked with always helps me do is it really calms me down to be in my most creative mind that I can be. And I think that if everyone who tries to do anything remotely creative could get into this state of mind, then we wouldn't see a thousand different copies of things that we have already seen. And we will even see more copies of things in the future because now everybody's talking about the rise of AI and art being created by machines and art being created by an artificial intelligence. And I think everything that's happening around this circle here does the exact opposite. It helps you to get into your most creative mind. It gets you into a specific way of being. And I think that's very powerful and very important for every creative person. Now, if you're still here, I want to show you something. I have a tattoo on my forearm. Now you should be able to read it. It says dojo. You might have heard that before. It's from martial arts. And dojo is the place where people go to practice. Um, and translated, it means the place for development or the place of the journey. And the reason why I've written it on my body is that I believe that our body basically is that place. Now, you could also view it in a different way. Um, if you're a creator, you might have had a space where you create your stuff. You might have uh, a place where you always go to do your videos, to perform your theatrical play, whatever it is. And to me, this book seems like it's a place that I can take with me. Because like I explained in the very beginning, opening this book immediately puts me there into that very place, into that very space. And everything else, when I, for example, spend too much time on any social media, I feel like I'm in a completely different place because then I start comparing myself to others. I look at other people's work and that sometimes doesn't inspire me the way that I want to be inspired. And so this is what I think in the last days has been extremely inspiring for me. And I think that I will be able to return to this place for quite a long time, quite often. So like I said, I do recommend you buy this book, read this book. If you don't, it's fine. I mean, I'm not getting paid to do that. If you know Rick Rubin, uh, Tell him I said hi. He doesn't know me, but I'm a huge fan. And not just a fan, I'm an admirer. And there are very few people that I can listen to. Doesn't matter what I feel like and doesn't matter what, I, what state of mind I'm in. But Rick seems to be one of these people. And that's why I admire him and his work so much. It's not a book you read cover to cover in two days. You can but it's more like, let me enter that, <laughs> that state of mind now. Let me enter that special room now to create something that I wasn't able to create before. If it does that for you, that's awesome. It's already doing that for me. So enjoy your creative journey. It's worth it. Life is shorter. And we think.